I think they just want a sense of belonging and ownership. And once you give them that, then they are a part of it. Then they own it. And then they're the ones that are going to pass it down. We would like to begin by recognizing and acknowledging that we are working and learning on the traditional territory of the Nakaz Lee First Nation. My name is Guy Prince. Uh, my real name is Francois Prince. I, I belong to the Beaver Clan and I'm here from Fort St. James here, um, Nakaz Lee Territory. And uh, I work in a school, like um, for now it's like one day a week, um, being a support to staff and to, mostly to students and to bring forth uh, what do you call that? Um, kind of like elders' presence or elder elders' knowledge to the uh, to the, all of the programs, I guess, in school. Yeah. I am I'm Kelly Indian, and I teach social studies and English, so I'm a humanities teacher here. And I am also the department head, the social studies department head. Hi, I'm Marina Solig, and I'm uh, the special education teacher at Fort St. James Secondary School in Fort St. James, British Columbia. My name is Leona Prince. I'm the school district principal of Aboriginal education for School District 91. I'm a member of the Lake Babi Nation. I come from Nakasli, a member of the Laksamasu clan, which is the Beaver clan. Um, my lineage actually comes from Fort St. James, a uh, descendant of Chief Kwa and Stiche, and so back at home. <laughs> the aim of this project is twofold. First, encourage our students to examine the significance of the truth and reconciliation process using a cross-curricular inquiry-based learning model. Secondly, students will then share the most important part of the process that resonates with them by designing and creating a portion of a feather to be permanently mounted on the entrance of the wall of Fort St. James Secondary School. The first question one has to consider is what does truth and reconciliation actually mean to you? Oh, it's kind of interesting how uh, you talk about uh, truth and reconciliation. Um, I think a large part of it, um, on, on my understanding from, from the uh, talking with elders and uh, looking at it through the cultural perspective, it's all about translation. So one of the things about, um, about um, bringing forth truth and reconciliation, I guess you can call it like in, in, in English, um, would be to just show people the translation to how the cultural aspect is. And one of the interesting ways about that is just the system that the First Nations have or the cultural system is, um, hasn't been recognized before. So if you put forth um, truth and reconciliation information on anything, all we're doing is promoting the culture. So uh, if we can, if we can uh, bring more cultural knowledge or more cultural competency to staff and students in the school, um, it not only brings forth an identity, but also does put forth that truth and reconciliation where culture is recognized for what it is. For myself and everything that I've learned about truth and reconciliation and how I've incorporated it into my daily life and everything that I do, as a person and in my professional life, it really is remembering who we were in the beginning. Before everything happened, I often refer back to our first treaty relationships, like the Turo Wampum Belt, because what that signified was at some point, um, we were two nations existing together, um, you know, mutual benefit, mutual respect, and that's what that original relationship was. Um, along the way, we sort of forgot what that was. And right now, the truth piece is learning how we departed from that original relation, those original intentions of how this country was going to be and sort of got off track. And the truth piece will be us finding out what that was. Um, we can't repair everything, but learning um, and educating people and, and having our own knowledge around it will actually go a long way towards reconciliation. Um, certainly, it means uh, coming to terms uh, with understanding our First Nations people, understanding the history, understanding their plight in the past and in the present and how that's going to look into the future. And um, absolutely, we need to come to the table together where our First Nations people will have a true voice 
in what is going on in our country uh, in a manner that is going to be meaningful to them. How that's going to happen, I don't know. I think truth and reconciliation is something that we're going to work on for the rest of our history. I don't think it's something we do once and it goes away. I think this is a conversation that we keep having and we keep exploring our history and the reasons things happened and how we can um, how we can move forward together. It's everybody's history. Again, it has to start, for me, in, in the way I see it, it has to start with first understanding what is truth and reconciliation? Why did we have a committee? What does the, the report on truth and reconciliation actually say? And to have a very deep understanding of that first and foremost. A general knowledge, a general understanding of what, how it came about and why that was important. And as I said earlier, from that, where do they see themselves in all of that? How is it true for them or not? I can't answer that question, but it certainly needs to have that kind of exploration from the student's point of view, uh, from their life experiences, from their parents, guardians, grandparents, etc., and to make those parallels for themselves. So where am I in all of this? How can I be of assistance to myself and to those around me? And how can I move forward positively from that? The reconciliatory piece is for all of us to hold all of our cultures up equally. Um, not taking anything down from anyone, but just building everybody up and, and sort of remembering those original relationships and those original intentions and truly being how we're perceived as Canadians to the world. But I think it's a way of thinking about curriculum that includes uh, Indigenous knowledge. Uh, for example, in one of our courses, we have um, Indigenous knowledge keepers that come and they talk about um, Indigenous uses of the natural environment at the same time as we are looking at Western science aspects. We look at different worldviews around the natural world and political systems and how things were organized in different cultures. Obviously, uh, First Nations are incredibly diverse across Canada, so we try to be very place conscious and bring people in who are local to us. Um, even as we understand there's a lot of diversity across the country and around the world. So, um, yeah, just really being conscious of where we live and including as many diverse voices as we can and listening um, in a way that maybe we we couldn't hear in the past. Um, it means having a diversity of texts, different uh, voices, those voices are what will bring justice um, to Canada and around the world. Um, so having a variety of texts, having a variety of um, perspectives, understanding that there is no one opinion, there are many opinions even within one uh, First Nation or one community. It's certainly uh, going to take, as I again said earlier, a lot of understanding which I think uh, we need to do more work on that, a deeper understanding of what it means for all of us who live in Canada uh, and for our students, all the students in this building, in particular First Nations students because it mostly affects, it affects all of us but it does affect them directly. I think that I, I heard a tweet and it was really interesting that I always say truth before reconciliation but somebody had said there has to be trust first and so uh, that was really profound and I was like, yeah, you do really have to trust someone before you can reconcile with them. And so I think there's that third layer for myself. So I think it's something we do throughout our curriculum um, forever because this is our story. This is never going to stop being our story, but hopefully we get better at um, talking about our story and understanding the perspectives that everybody brings and figuring out how to create, I don't know, the word justice just is what I always think about in, in what kids are able to move forward in their lives, able to do where they're welcomed, where their voices are heard, um, and so that they, they can take their rightful place, wherever those places are, um, 
they feel like this place is also theirs and that they have a unique voice with it. I think that conversation needs to be happening at all times. Um, it can never be a, a been there, done that situation. We need to have discussions as to how we can better inform ourselves and therefore be better equipped to uh, assist our students through their own understanding. So first, I must understand my colleagues. We must have a, a common understanding of, of what is happening regarding truth and reconciliation and then impart that to our students. Education is the answer. Any way, for any situation, any time in the world, education is the answer. And how to encourage our students, motivate our students, engage our students to continue to come to school. That's where the community comes in. One of the things I think we have to think about is, is thinking beyond um, residential schools to economic marginalization, to the impact of of some of the legislation that um, put different political structures on top of Indigenous people through the Indian Act. You know, how this was a full uh, spectrum of issues that impacted uh, First Nations people. The second question for the leaders in our community is, what do you hope the students will learn and take away from this project? And so I want them to see the complexity and I'd like them to talk to each other and I would like them to, to come away feeling like there's, there's more to know and then it's okay. It's okay to talk about these things. It is important to talk about these, these things and we can do that in a way where everybody is safe and honored. We need to know who we are and where we come from in order to understand how we came to be here in the present and then moving forward from that, how do we make the changes that are going to be necessary for us to live harmoniously with compassion and understanding for all, all peoples that inhabit Canada. One of the things that I've been working on was um, uh, the translation, what I was talking about. And uh, you know, um, I asked uh, a lot of our elders what the word what n translates to in English. And uh, one elder said, what n means what n. And then so I had to go sneak over to another elder and I said, what does what n mean? And they said, well, if you want to put it in English, it means place. But it also, it doesn't mean just place. It refers to the birds, the animals, the insects, the, the water, the air, the leaves, the grass, the trees, the willows. Everything in that place is within. And it made me realize that, uh, that truth and reconciliation or even culture comes to that matter, whether you're First Nations or European, when you're in a place, you're part of that what then. So coming to terms to who you are or um, based on the place you're at is what then, and that's truth and reconciliation. I'm actually really excited about this after getting a short overview of what this project will become. I think it will impact our system in two ways. First of all, our students you know, the biggest stakeholder, the reason that we all here, the reason we walk. Um, I think what they'll learn is that you can look at Indigenous pieces and Indigenous histories and learnings um, from many different places. I think it's incredibly important for them to see it not as just history and for you to teach them through um, computer technology and then through wood carving I think just those multiple, multiple modes of learning will solidify that learning and they'll take so much ownership over that. And so you start with reconciliation and you have these experiential learnings in place where they really, really take ownership of it. I think if we just teach it in the one way, then they don't sort of incorporate that into who they are as people. But I think the more and more you can repeat a message in three different ways, I think that's gonna be incredibly important. Um, I also think that this will impact other staff and how they teach Indigenous knowledge in that usually, usually, traditionally, it was done through our humanities, so social studies, English, etc. Um, but I think it's, very, it's a trailblazing way to look at it through computer technology. Like who even thinks about reconciliation and how you can use computer technology to, to sort of show that learning. And then, you know, similarly, 
wood carving. Like, uh, I think it's just an interesting take and it'll show other educators cross-curricular appro approaches that they can incorporate into their own practice. And I think that will be a secondary offshoot of this whole project, but also just as important for BC. I think they just want a sense of belonging and ownership. And once you give them that, then they are a part of it. Then they own it. And then they're the ones that are gonna pass it down.